Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly and this video is brought to you by my brand new course Reactive Programming in iOS using Combine Framework and this is hosted on my Teachable website. There's a special deal going on right now. Instead of $49.99, you can get the complete course for the Black Friday sale for just $24.99. Let's just go ahead and check out the contents of this course. You can see that we're going to start with introduction to the combined framework. We're going to learn about publishers and subscribers and operators and networking. And then we're going to dive into combined with UIKit, but also combined with Swift UI. Then you're going to learn about custom operators, debugging, and even testing combined code. So this is a great course if you want to learn about the combined framework, reactive programming using Swift UI, as well as UI Kit with MVVM design pattern for UI Kit. So if you're ready, go ahead and check out these amazing deals for the Black Friday. It is full access, Black Friday coupon only $24.99 instead of the full price of $49.99. But guess what? This is not going to last that long. It's going to expire on the 4th. All right, so make sure that you take advantage of this deal. Now let's go ahead and go back to the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. In this video, you'll be learning about how you can structure your iOS applications for navigation when they're using tab views. Now keep in mind that the code that I'm going to show you is already available in Apple sample application. This application is called building or backyard birds building an app with Swift data and widgets. And what I'm going to show you is simply some portions of the app itself. So we're going to code the only the part that performs the navigation. But I highly recommend that you check out this sample if you want to work with Swift data, if you want to look at the navigation. I will also add the link in the YouTube description. So where do we get started over here? Well, there are a couple of things that we actually need when we are building an application that consists of, you know, tab views. It will be a good idea to represent each tab with an enum, meaning all the tabs are in our application can be represented by enums. So I'll create an app screen. And again, once again, all of this code that I'm typing is available, is taken, is available from this sample, Backyard Birds. Okay, so I've just extracted out the navigation part and we're gonna learn about that. So app screen is in, basically over here is a hashable. We're gonna put it as hashable. We're gonna put it as identifiable and case iterable because we will have a number of cases over here and we do want to iterate through our cases. Each case is going to represent a particular tab. So Backyards, we can also have birds and we can also have plants. And since we are trying to conform to identifiable, we must also implement the ID property. So ID, which is app screen, and it's just going to return self because self is already hashable. Great. Now I'm gonna code everything in the same file, which is content view, just so that I can easily share it with you, but you should create different file for app screen and all the different screens that we're going to be creating. So now we have the app screen. We, when we, whenever we're displaying our tab views, the tab view will consist of the text, which is a label, and also some sort of the image. And one of the ways that you can actually do that is simply by creating a computer property for the app screen itself. So these are the screens. These are the different cases. These are the different tabs. And each tab can represent a label and a destination. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform extension on the app screen itself. And I can go ahead and create a label property, which is going to return you some sort of a view. And we can mark this as a view builder. So view builder means that this is going to be returning you an actual view. But right now it's not really doing anything. So I can go ahead and say self 
And if the case is backyards, then in those cases, I can create a label. I can return you a label which will contain the text, which is backyards, and the system image, which is a tree. I can use the same exact approach for the birds and the plants also. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put it for the birds and the plants. There we go. Great. Once we have the app screen, let's go ahead and see that how we can display the app screen. Now, in the content view, you can see that it's simply displaying a VStack. And you can see that how it displays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an app tab view, which is going to display kind of like all the tabs. This will be also a view. So app tab view, view. And since it's a view, it needs to implement the body property. And in the body property, I can go ahead and use a tab view with a selection. So selection over here basically means that whatever is selected, go ahead and display that particular tab. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass in the selection. And the selection will be the screen itself. And somebody else will be passing in this binding. So that's why we are decorating it with binding property wrapper right there. OK, so for the content, we're not going to be using this part. Um, let's go ahead, close this out. And there we go. OK, all right. So let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. We have the app tab view, which is simply a view. And someone, meaning whoever is trying to use app tab view, they're going to be passing in a binding for app screen. And the reason that this is binding is because the parent who is going to be passing in from the top will also need to know when the app screen or the selection actually changes. So we pass in the tab view over here, which is a selection, which is app screen. That's fine. And now we can go ahead and use a for each to display all the uh, different labels. So app screen dot all cases. That's why we made our app screen iterable. You can see right here. So we can iterate through the different cases. We only have three cases, which is backyard, birds, and plants. So all of these three cases we can iterate. We're going to get those things. We're going to put it in screen. And now I can go ahead and do something over here. All right. So if I go ahead and say, like, I can say text over here, but obviously text is not going to look nice. So we will have to do something about that like whatever you want to display. For the tag, we're going to say screen as app screen. A tag is important over here. And the reason tag is important is because whenever the selection is going on, it is a value in the tag that is being used for the selection value. And for the tab item, we can always use screen.label. All right, so that is what we're going to do. Now, in the content view, we can start using our app tab view. So let me remove all of that and simply say app tab view. We do have to pass in a selection. Now, you can go ahead and pass in a selection like backyard or something over here, but that is a constant selection. So probably you don't want to do that. But just to check it out, like if you go ahead and select different things, you can see that how your tabs are actually changing. So now I have birds. Let's go ahead and select birds. So now it's the middle one. So this all is working. But again, it's never really a good idea to pass constants like that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a selection property and pass in a selection. All right, there we go. Great. Now, right now, if I go ahead and select birds or plants and backyards, nothing really happens because we don't really have any destination, right? We don't know where to go. When you click on backyard, when you click on birds, when you click on plants, where are we actually going? What screen are we displaying? We can again go back 
to our app screen. And in the app screen, right now we have a label which simply displays the, you know, this part, all the labels and the icons. But we can have another property also over here. We can call it destination. Some view. Again, it's going to return you a view. So let's go ahead and make sure this is a view builder. And we can perform a switch on self, which is a switch on app screen. And destination, if this is backyards, then we will display a text in which will say backyards. Destination, if it is birds, then we will display text that is simply going to say birds. And finally, if the destination is plants, you can guess that we are going to go ahead and display plants. Okay, so now we have this destination property in the app screen. And instead of the text over here, we can actually use the destination. So screen.destination. And you can already see that the first, the text view, is being displayed. If I change to birds, it says birds. So this is the one that's getting displayed. And if I say plants, then obviously this one is getting displayed. So we're on the right track, but currently we're just displaying the text. And what we want to do is not display the text, but we want to display the whole navigation stack. Because when you're on the backyards, and let's say that you have a list over here, something like this, then this all will be in, in a very separate navigation stack. If I am on birds, that will be completely different navigation stack. So you have to take into account that every single tab will have its own navigation stack because you can be on the plants and you can be deep in the navigation of plants. But when you go to backyards, that is going to be using its own navigation stack. So those are the things that we have to take into account. So how do we do that? How do we create the navigation stack? Well, in those cases, it's going to just be a view. So I'm just going to go ahead and say backyard navigation stack. It will be a view. And the only difference between this view and the other views is that this is going to be wrapping everything inside a navigation stack. So inside the navigation stack right now, I can simply say backyard and that's fine. Now I can start using the backyard navigation stack instead of a text view. There we go. There we go. Now that it doesn't really make any difference over here, but let's go ahead and create the navigation stack for bird stack and also for the plants. It's going to look exactly the same. There we go. All right. And we can start using it over here. Instead of the text, I'm going to go ahead and say bird navigation stack. And that's good because each of the tabs is performing their own navigation. It's keeping track of their own navigation because they're using not a shared, but a different navigation stack. Now, if you wanted to, let's say in the backyard navigation stack, you wanted to do something, like you wanted to, you know, create a list, you can do that. I mean, I can go over here and change this code to create a list. And I can use a navigation link to go to a different screen. So you can see that I'm on the backyards tab and I'm using the navigation stack, which is only for the backyards. I can go ahead, go to a detail, but when I go to the birds, it's just gonna show me the birds navigation stack or the plants navigation stack. But if I go back to the birds, it's keeping track. You can see the back button over here. So it knows that where we are because it is using a separate navigation stack for each tab, which is great. So this is one of the ways that you can organize your iOS application where for navigation when you are using uh, the tab view control. So hope you have enjoyed this video. And once again, uh, check the links in the YouTube description. I have a link for my Teachable channel and check out all the deals that are going on. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure you like it, make sure you share it, subscribe to it. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you.